Um, yeah, well, everybody, thank you for your time. Uh, certainly, this is a great way to end the week. Uh, I want to introduce uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, I guess we are, oh, I'm going to just add another person here. Uh, I guess we are Friday or whatever day we think it is at this point uh, this week. A uh, big proposal day for us. Um, so we thought that there was no better way to bring in Birdo uh, on a day where we're literally taking flights. Uh, I think you've all agreed that we've had a fantastic group of luminaries uh, with us this week uh, on topics ranging from the wild west of online dating all the way through to, you know, stories of caffeine, um, sort of drugging prospective clients with caffeine with the hopes of landing early morning business. Uh, we're in a special treat here today, and this is a speaker who combines art, business with the right amount of mystery. Uh, the great Salvador Dali once wrote that intelligence without ambition is a bird without wings. And I'd like to introduce you to my friend who's a living, breathing microcosm of this quote, uh, Birdo, aka Jerry Rugg, which is actually also an alias name. Uh, Birdo is a globally recognized Toronto-based artist whose work can best be described as combining the surrealist nature of Salvador Dali with the crisp geometrical aesthetic of Swiss-based design. Uh, Birdo's passion was incubated on the Canadian prairies, and as a side note, uh, we shared our very first job together. I know that was my first job. I think it was your first job as well. So uh, we go yeah. way back, almost too far back, but uh, many decades. So uh, yeah, <laughs> coming full circle. But now, so Nathan, we... you know, you know who's behind the mask? Then I know who's behind the mask, and huh. uh, I do. I, I I know who's behind the mask, but. <laughs> Took this intricate web to, uh, to you know to figure that out as well because uh, uh, he holds that pretty tight. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Prairie born, and that's pretty exciting. But now he's a bona fide global star. Uh, his areas of focus are muralism, canvas work, three D sculpture, and as you've seen from the deck that I sent through, large scale installation projects. And while the real face of the eagle mask man behind us and before us today remains a mystery. Uh, his large-scale animal-infused uh, murals definitely aren't. Uh, today, Birdo has commissions in Chicago, Detroit, Puerto Rico, Miami, Shanghai, among many others. And I guess yesterday he was kind enough to send us his deck, and I spent a number of minutes going through it, and it was very, very, very sort of exciting to see. Uh, so be sure to reference that deck as he goes through and tells his story today. And to conclude this intro, uh, there's another Dali quote that, uh, you know, the true sort of artist is not sort of one who is inspired, but one who inspires others. And I think we're all going to pull a little inspiration from Birdo today. So with that, my friend, thank you for your time and I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, that, I'm, I'm not, not saying this because uh, we've got the hometown connection. That was the best introduction I've received. Uh, so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you kindly. Um, yeah, and to piggyback on that, that Dolly quote, um, a friend of mine always used to say that um, each and every one of us can every single day either inspire or be inspired. And um, that's always stuck with me because I, I can't say I'm always feeling like I'm inspiring, but uh, I, I do like the, the, the times that we're living in. I, 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 there's a lot of sort of... Um, mixed opinions, especially from the artists uh, with with the role of Instagram and, and social media. But it's a it's an epic lexicon of information and inspiration. And, and it, it's everywhere you go. So uh, as I've navigated uh, not only Toronto, but the world, uh, one of my favorite things to do is just look up and, and, and see what sort of visual information is is on our buildings. So um, a little bit about myself, um, my journey did start in Saskatchewan and uh, I had met some buddies that were actually spray painting on freight trains. And it was, it was, it was kind of linked to hip hop culture. I was into rap music in the nineties and uh, it, it became like a, there was a high, high level of fascination and I used to go and sit by the train tracks as we, you know, like scurry under a fence, climb. And my buddies would always scold me and say, never climb under a train. You never know what's connected at the other end and, and learned all the, the rules and etiquette of, of being a, uh, a teenage miscreant. 
Um, but it was just this high, high level of, of adventure and, and the, the sounds of the, the, the clanking and the smells. And that's where a sort of uh, a, a now 15, uh, nearly 20 year addiction to aerosol uh, as an art farm started. Um, so I always cite, if I've ever done interviews in magazines, that um, my graffiti years were uh, bad, bad years. And I, not bad, ba- well, sort of, they were bad behavior, but just my creative output wasn't very good and my intentions weren't very good. And at a certain point, point I, was, I was lucky enough to be introduced to a friend that just started getting me into the uh, Adobe software just as I used to bum around his art gallery. And, and so I was picking up um, Illustrator and Photoshop on my own. And then by way of serendipity, I met the right person to, to just push me to go to Humber College. And um, so I was uh, riding my bicycle out to the Lakeshore campus every day um, as a mature student. And I was, I was just ready, uh, ready to kick some butt. And I decided to, in my mind at the time, become a, a sort of professional artist, if you will. So I pursued becoming an art director um, by way of the advertising and design program at Humber. And I always reference that as being this wonderful fork in the road. Um, you know, it taught me how to be a, a, a young professional or, or just like scramble around at Humber College, like worrying about all the deadlines and over overstressing things. So I, I'm sure you all can relate. The one thing that I, I always thought was so interesting was when I did get into the corporate world in advertising, all the juniors would just when the fires were going, I, nobody was putting out fires. You were you were creating more fires, and the seniors always had this wonderful, calm approach. And uh, so, what ended up happening was I made a list of the ten agencies in Toronto that I would that my dream agencies, and uh, ended up uh, being employed uh, at the third the third one. And again, serendipity uh, led the course because uh, the creative director of the shop was from Saskatoon. And I knew that. And I, I had a chance to meet him. I was like, yo, I, I hear you for your Sasky boy. And, and he, he is like, you know, he was several years my senior, but he, he was like, what high school do you go to? And did you go to? And so he, Nathan and I all went to the same high school. So I, at, at that very moment, I was like, yes, hired. Um, so I put in a few years at, at Gray Canada and I mean, again, it, it just, that was the first, um, entry point in my life for just sheer professionalism, uh, doing the presentations, doing the meetings, um, keep keeping up with, uh, the deadlines. Um, but the, the sort of the artistic lessons that I learned at Humber really influenced my um like frankly my ability as a painter and so i just got really excited and i was working the 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 common long hours in advertising but i couldn't wait to get home on the weekend and just just paint and a lot there was friction amongst my buddies because they're like man you're getting good you could charge like 100 bucks to to paint someone's garage or whatever and i was like yeah i could but i i've got a full-time job and i prefer just just explore and and create and I kind of took the portfolio building model that I knew so well as a graphic designer and I was just painting garages like crazy I would go into the office Monday just my eyes would be black and blue all crust in my hair um I wasn't wearing the mask to work at the time and it it, it just I I just built this this portfolio and I started considering I could see online that there was a community that was that in, at least in my vision that they looked a little bit like rock stars, like traveling the globe, going to Miami, you know, painting. And it, it I was romanced by this. And, and uh, I'll, I'll share, I'll, I'll try to sh- shorten the, the, the anecdote, but it's a really good one. I had a client and uh, we, finished a meeting on a Friday and I zipped out of there all excited for the weekend. And 
I ended up getting an email to uh, Jerry Rugg. And I answer the email and it's from Amanda, who I was in the same room with 20 minutes prior. And she says, hey, we got this building and we're, we're just wondering, you know, do you do large scale stuff? Do you have, you know, any thoughts on that? And I look at my buddy and I'm like, you know, I, I, I don't think she makes the correlation. <laughs> and yeah, credit to Adam Drover, a great Newfoundlander friend of mine. He's like, yo, let's let's play this out. So I, so I answered as, as Birdo and I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, to, to have that conversation. And so we kind of went back and forth and, and I could feel that, you know, we were talking budget and it felt like there was an opportunity for me to paint the biggest piece um, as a, you know, uh, a hobbyist artist. And it got down to the production date. We were shooting a, a, a spot for Yellowtail Wine. And I had told my uh, associate creative director about the whole situation. And he's like, all right, don't worry, I got this. So we get to lunchtime and we're all sitting down for lunch. And um, JP said, he was like, JP says, so Amanda, like, where is, is the photo production studio? And she says, oh, such and such address. And he's like, get out of here. I live like two blocks away. Uh, I, I take my son for a walk every weekend. I know that wall very well would you ever consider putting artwork on, on the building? And she, she says, no, I, yeah, we, we're, we're in conversation with someone right now to put artwork on the building. He says, that's fantastic. Like, you know that Jay is an artist. Like, would you ever, con like, would you, you should check out his portfolio. And it was so beautiful because you could, we could, we all knew on our side and this poor lady had no idea you could tell she was just being polite because she's like, oh, okay, like what's the graphic designer? So he's like, well, I mean, yeah, I, I'd love to check his workout. And so I just have this part of my fresh with this shit eating grin where I pull out my phone, I go to my Instagram page and I'm like, yeah, but like just, you know, you never know. And I slide it across the table and we're all just sitting at the table, like looking like this. And it was the most beautiful episode of punks where she just, looks at the phone looks up at me looks at the phone looks up at me and and you know she's she thought that it was a, a setup the whole time <laughs> this wonderful moment where again i was like yes like i i booked that job and so that's memorable to me because you know she they were very kind with the budget i think because of the, the story and i quit my job two weeks after that and i had my I, I, that was it. I was I was gonna dive in, and so it's been um, I'm broaching five years since since that moment, and uh, I mean the journey has taken me through many many pitfalls, but many successes, many lessons learned, um, many uh, I, I would say my favorite aspect of of my journey has been I, I'm an observer, and so. People always ask, like, well, you've, you've got to travel with work. And so did you go to this museum or do this or do that? My scheduling, and, and I've noticed this with working artists, um, I have freelance people as well. A lot of people, like, if, if you're rolling, you're not taking time off in between. You're just rolling on to the next. So the one thing is with my travels, I've gone to a, a, an interesting location and just cranked out a mural and kind of, don't even take a breath and then just get on to the next the next location but my favorite thing to do is just be on that corner where, wherever and sort of observe from there so you know if if i'm in shanghai on a project uh, fortunately i did get to take in some of the city but it's my my learning is just by who's walking past the mural every day for for that two week period or who's yelling up to me or or asking questions or what are the little shops like in the nearby so it's you know it's definitely not the most uh, romantic of journeys but it's kind of a you know it, it it didn't start off that romantic with the train tracks anyway so that sort of uh, is is built into my story um, very, very try, try to practice the attitude of gratitude. And when things do get sticky, because I've modeled my system actually after the advertising world. So I, I have my, I have my silos that, that I work in just as a two man unit. So my manager 
a, a Torontonian fella um, and myself will take on all departments. And basically, you know, like if he's running accounts, I'm doing the creative department and, and addressing feedback. And I think it's that whole experience with, with the schooling and the, the agency stuff for the first few years of, of my journey, I could really see me advancing much quicker than a lot of my peers because you know there's there is a generalization to artists i mean that sometimes they're in their head so much and so incredibly creative that the the balance is off and i always tell young artists that in my opinion like you you got to be operating at 50 percent business 50 percent artwork um and and somewhere somewhere in and around there where i know a lot of artists are are operating at uh, 90 to 95 percent artwork and so it's always interesting to see like who's doing well as an artist a, a, a muralist a, someone that works in the public realm um and sometimes uh, and i know art is subjective but sometimes you'll see work and be like man really like how did they green light that project but i'm convinced that it's everything on the back end which is really impressive so I'm a I'm a junkie for sort of research and and looking at my peers and trying to understand their journey and it's it's always fun for me to you know I can try to pick a pick apart how they technically painted that portrait but what's more fun for me is you know how are they what's their meat kit what's their you know their, uh, are they doing RFPs what is their sort of uh, approach and so you know, at this level, sometimes I'll say I'm a, you know, whether it's an intermediate or senior level artist and, and always looking to grow. But as a young businessman, I, I feel like I'm I'm constantly learning. And that's 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 usually where I'm taking my my dings on the on the chin is is uh, just navigating as the as the contracts get bigger and the projects scale up. I'm I'm often finding myself in first time situations. And so, uh, that, that seems to be, uh, that leads to excitement, whether it's the, the good butterflies or the bad ones. Right on. Can you, can you talk a little bit about your process? I mean, like, I mean, we're seeing upwards of 20 stories high. I mean, that just takes so much work and lead up to that to sort of plan that out. So maybe if you could, in a couple minutes, just detail what that process looks like from ideation through to execution and implementation. Definitely. Uh, so, I mean, it's it, what's cool again, we live in the, 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 the digital age. So if it's uh, a project in, in Jordan, uh, 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 Al, Al Maprock was the name of the town, I can only operate off of photos of the space. So, you know, I do love to go to a site and get a feel for things because the, the, the Oftentimes I work with viewpoints. And so if, you know, I want my creation to, to be impactful from one specific place that you're standing on the ground. So it's always best to, to be able to look, look at the space, but my process is really, uh, I'll get a photo of the space and, and pop it into the software. So a nice little callback to me learning Photoshop as a young man and, and really just start creating options. And as I mentioned, I, I do keep, keep this sort of uh, advertising uh, uh, protocol where Wayne, my manager, and I will will start with brainstorming, you know, what might be relevant to the local community, do some research. Um, interestingly enough, all of my work starts with a color scheme and I build out from there. So if I'm just feeling red, like if it's got to be red, uh, yeah, it probably will be a, a cardinal or a fox because as you know, I, I work with creatures and animals. Um, and I will, I will oftentimes crank out, I think I try to hit three options, um, equally, you know, that I, that I am, I'm happy with. And I like to present the client with, with three options, uh, for them to choose from. And then it's, it's, uh, you know, pre-production I've, I've got to acquire the supplies and, and for me, I like, I like to take care of everything, take everything off the hands of the client. So once we shake hands, then and it's just like, you guys sit back. I got the equipment. I got all, all of uh, the pre-production stuff. And I have this sort of, um, it, it's not a superstition. It's a tradition. So 
really the hardest part is going from my 13 inch computer screen to 15, like 150 feet. And so there's different systems, there's grid systems, uh, little side note, uh, pro the use of projectors in my community is a bit of a, it's kind of this funny conversation where the purists think it's cheating and, uh, <laughs> and, and I, 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 I'm a bit old school because of the graffiti days, but I, I also believe that, man, I, like whatever's the most efficient, do it, it, it put, put your ego aside. It's so, funny so, you bring that up. We were talking about it yesterday. There's a artist that you might know in the U.S., David Hockney. Uh, mm -hmm. He was famous for his pool scenes, and he did those beautiful pool scenes in California. And he wrote a book 20 years ago entitled Secret Knowledge. Uh, right. And he looked at the, the camera obscura uh, to sort of argue that artists far earlier were using the camera obscura, which is essentially a projector, uh, to, you know, create and, and trace out uh, and look to two major sort of themes. One was that most of the people were left-handed, which would have actually occurred, you know, when you had that reverse image. And then distortions in things like tablecloth that only the camera obscura would have done. Um, so it's not cheating if you're not trying or you're not trying if you're not cheating. So uh, I, I fully get that, especially that you're in the business mindset of 50-50, which was also really cool to hear. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just became familiar of that artist, actually. Uh, and that, that's a great point at the end of the day, because... I have a, a very stubborn buddy uh, who I ca came up with in the the uh, more mangy years, and he is just staunchly opposed to using any of the tricks. And it's come to the point where some other buddies of uh, and I will will just rag on him a bit about his proportion, and and at the end of the day, like your badge of honor should be on nailing the artwork rather than than the process so uh that previously mentioned tradition is that once i get the outline up on the building that would be the first step i'll, I'll take a step back look at it and say okay cool proportions on now it's just paint by numbers and that's when i officially pop the headphones in and it's party times <laughs> right on uh, I, I have a question um sorry nate um so I joined a little bit late. I hope you hadn't touched on this, but um, the eagle head, is there a, you know, special significance uh, to you as to why you chose that to be your mask or persona? So it, it, there, was a, there was a question asked uh, before my uh, rant. And it, what's really cool about it is, so my, my artist nickname is, is Birdo. So I mean, it, it did, it did make sense to have a sort of a bird related, uh, mask, but I employed the help of a buddy in Toronto who is, he's a master in, in his craft and I left it with him. And he, I remember the day he texted me that it, it was time to pick up the mask and I had no idea what it was going to look like. And he was like, yo, you're going to love it. And so Eugene, in effect, uh, just in a 48 hour period kind of created my brand and I, I just looked at it loved it and, and stuck with it so it's uh i mean it makes sense because of my artist name but it was just this great moment of trusting like a legendary local artist and and he killed it what does it look like to travel to jordan with a with a mask like that i'm sure you get uh you know a few head turns or whatever <laughs> uh, i mean the th like what i like you know, I, I definitely am inspired by surrealism and, and oftentimes, like, obviously the first question I get when I'll do an interview um, is, is like, what's the deal with the mask? And we, what I try to push most, like, my, my most common answer is, what mask? And I do that because I love the idea of, sort. I, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a music video by a band called Daft Punk in the 90s where this guy had this dog yeah. head really fun. Yeah. so nobody turned and and questioned that that dog man he kind of was just navigating his way through the city streets and and i like the idea that as a surrealist painter it, it, when i put the mask on it's i become this kind of surreal bird creature and <laughs> and I don't. It, it's just funny to me to think that it's a guy out on the street with a mask, rather than uh, you know, like some some imaginary creature. 
and and funny little notion uh vice had done a spot with me a couple years ago and they said let's watch so i i live on queen west in toronto they said would you mind us filming you taking the mask out uh i popped the mask on and i walked around and i kid you not i couldn't go very far without people being like you know like yelling from across the street like burn out and and i had a chuckle because when I go on Queen Street without the mask, I have never had a single person yell anything uh, <laughs> at me. So my my little avatar seems to garner more attention. Well, I obviously would garner more attention, but he's 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 more recognized. That's for sure. Hey, Berto, do you just have one mask, or do you have a few of them? I, I'm actually I actually have three masks, and uh, this is the the newest iteration. And in fact, you on, on this call are the first. I haven't showed it to anybody. It's it's wow. brand spanking new. Um, the reason I have the new new mask is because I had an assistant that I was working on a project. He he accidentally kicked the old mask down a, a huge flight of stairs, and it was looking worse for for the wear. So Eugene. Uh, made me a made me a more sleek stronger version this one's more more accessible for airports i can fit it in a smaller sort of little carrying case and just throw it on the on the belt and then he made me this crazy grand uh mask it's like six feet in width um i wish i had a photo for you guys it's it's absolutely it's crazy so that's like this that that's the mask i'll get married in I, I believe. <laughs> and and and, and, and uh, Vanessa's in the room right now, and she. Uh, if anybody shakes their head the most at Berto, it's her. And and as we all know, your your partner is is uh, the most important person in your life. So she. So basically, she was just saying like, no, you're not wearing that mask. <laughs> you would. Do you find you have a different character when you're wearing the mask? I I kind of yeah yeah I do. It's 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 so interesting interesting because and and Christopher Guest is a is a filmmaker and he uh he did all those kind of mockumentaries on the dog shows and whatnot I just noticed he did a mascot one recently I, I think the world of mascots is a hilarious place to play in um and I kind of understand them a bit in that when I wear the mask in public I stand out like a sore thumb it's 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 all the looks are coming this way but it's almost like I have this cloak around me where you kind you 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 you're kind of more outgoing because no no one would ever know who you are and so it's a, when i put the mask on i'm always nervous because we're usually doing it to, to film stuff so i'm a bit nervous and i feel awkward but as soon as i put it on you're kind of, i'm just like ah like i'm kind of free to do whatever because no one would uh no one would be the wiser so uh <laughs> it, it 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 definitely i i've i've created a little character indeed Oh, that's great. Uh, you wouldn't know this, uh, Berto, but uh, on the call, Janet Weiss. So she's a, a former executive with the with the train and uh, in, in one of the, the, the train companies. Here. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I will be passing this with your permission, this video on to a few of my executive friends in the rail industry going, now we know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. oh, oh, no. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> And I'm glad to hear you considered safety because that was the biggest concern of the graffiti artists going, we don't want to run any of them over. Trains are dangerous. So I'm glad to hear there's a protocol out there. Yeah. And, and just as a note, what's interesting is you have, there's, there's two schools of thought. Well, there's many schools of thought, but there's the city graffiti cat and then there's the train graffiti cat. And there are two different mindsets. And what I really admired about the train guys is that you're very correct. They they are incredibly knowledgeable about about rail culture in Canada and the U.S. They know they you know one example is that it one of the biggest sins uh, amongst the the train graffiti guys is painting over any of the numbers, any of the identifying uh, markers on the train. So guys would always bring tape out. They tape out tape off all the numbers, paint their painting, and then peel it off. And so there was, even though they were obviously completely disrespecting the service, there was a huge admiration and respect for uh, the, uh, the, the yards and the layups and the, 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 the boxcars and, and hoppers themselves.
Well, that's good to know. And certainly the government of Canada's grain hopper fleet never looked the same after uh, graffiti <laughs> took over it. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. That's, guys, I'll, I'll, that's the funniest moment for the call for me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we do have some, some great artists on our team. So maybe I'll turn it over to Dave or Parveen if, if you have uh, – audio there but maybe Dave you know do you have do you have any questions I know you're working on your your craft and your art every day I saw you burning the midnight oil last night on the special project for our RFP today um is there any sort of inspiration uh, or sort of questions that you have for Birdo you know that'll help drive your day-to-day -day, Dave I don't know if I have really a whole lot of questions I some of the press the questions you answered already in your preparation like some of that you know with the uh your proportions and you're getting your um you know, everything up on that big scale but more just really impressed man with um you know taking those steps to those huge buildings and just uh and just pursuing your passion I don't know I like looked through your deck and it was just very very nice work like so tight um you know more admiration than real questions. Like again, you kind of covered your questions that I sort of had for you. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. I just, you know, beautiful work. Unreal. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very, very much. I mean, it's for me. I've noticed a a, a definite bond amongst uh, my peers and artists all over because you know. Whether I, I know a couple rock stars in LA that are just just so famous, do it, making so much money, doing their thing, and then I know the starving artist uh, in Parkdale in Toronto, and everybody in between. And there's there's always this admiration and and respect for for the grind um, because I don't I I've chosen not to buy into um, the term starving artist, and I I always try to reflect uh, what I call the well-fed artist and and I mean it it's I think a lot of it is mentality and and as I said we as we know a lot of it is is the business aspect so um you know we're, we're I'm, I'm proud of all artists uh you know even it, my, my favorite exercise is trying to find all of the amazing positives out of artists that their physical artwork i do not like at all and, and it, I find that that's that's where I gain a ton of inspiration because they're do you know for it, to me someone that that's that's like an amazing artist that's doing really well it, that's very obvious in, in my opinion I'm like okay I get why you'd be successful but uh it's the ones that sort of push the boundaries or you know use simplified forms or what have you that I'm always so fascinated about breaking down their system so hey Berto it, uh, my name is Leonard by the way um, but I have a, a, a friend of mine and I, I love the story about the passion about you just following it and I have a friend of mine who said I'm gonna I'm gonna start painting go goalie masks yeah the cool. NHL his name is Dave Gunnarsson I've known Dave like I don't know feels like a couple hundred years but I said to him like dude there's no way you're gonna have a career out of this and it turned into be one of the most successful careers and he's He's like in demand. That's all he does. He paints goalie masks. Yeah, is, he, and he he paints a lot of the 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 professionals seek him out. Correct. Yeah, they're all, all like every team, every 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 goalie in the world pretty much uses him. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's. Uh, I know the name. I know who you're speaking of. That's really cool. You know him. It. it I mean, we. I didn't. I didn't learn. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but I didn't learn goal setting till later in life. And uh, if as an I, I I sat down with a younger friend of mine that that's struggling a bit and took him through a, a full exercise and got him into my my spreadsheets and he, as an artist he was like what is this why are we in spreadsheets and and so the loft you know I had a, a mentor a few years ago that took me through an exercise and she's like what are your goals this is a four years ago and I said she's like what's the biggest thing what's your dream if you could if a genie in a bottle could could direct your life what's your biggest dream and I was like I want to paint a 20-story mural and she was like that's it that's the biggest thing you can think <laughs> of and fast forward to these four years later I now I'm looking back I checked off every item it's crazy I, I lived out all of those objectives and now I sit here on my next kind of five-year vision and I'm like man why why didn't I think uh, any bigger uh, back then but that's part of the journey so Definitely, you know, with the goalie masks, like 
if 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 you dream it, uh, you can do it. You know, it, it's that's really cool. And I'm a I'm a huge huge sports fan, so a few of my kind of what I call blue sky ideas are are collaborate. Like I'm a crazy big Raptors fan, so I, I've I've done these basketball court. I've reimagined these basketball courts. So yeah, I've got these lofty goals that people are like, yeah, right. But I mean, where there's a will, there's there's a way. So that's great. Well, I don't think there's any better way to end this, uh, you know, team's call today with, with that message where there's a will there the way and, and really sort of putting uh, passion and vision into action, which you're doing every day and checking those lists at the same time, taking a business approach to, to your artistry. Um, so super thankful, but sort of moreover, I'm really proud of you. You know, we shared our first uh, job and we were busting tables like 20 plus years ago. That's and, right. Uh, well, here we are, sort of, you know, a guiding light for us as we go into an important RFP day of our own today and uh, forge along at a, at a tough time. So grateful for your time. I know I speak on the entire team that there's been more smiles on this call than, uh, you know, I think we've had it in quite some time. And, and that alone is, 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 is a win. So uh, thank you. Uh, I'll be in touch after and, and let's collab. I think there's a great opportunity, Matt. Definitely, hey, definitely. Nathan, thanks for including me. This made my day. You're yeah. Hey, Birdo. Thanks, Birdo. Thank Unreal. you so much. Oh, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Birdo. You make you make me want to be a better bird. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm happy to hear. Uh, and it's always nice to to round out an RFP on a Friday. Best of luck, you guys. I I, I hope you guys land it. And uh, thanks uh, thanks for sharing your time with me. Thanks, yeah, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Birdo. Take care. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Nathan, that was amazing.